Hello everyone, thanks for the opportunity to present our work. We are glad to be here. My name is Heiner Gomes and the title of our work is Parallel Differential Evolution Meta Heuristic and Modeling for Network Slicing in 5G Scenarios. The other authors are Dario Vieira from EFREI, Miguel de Castro from UFC, Leonel Feitosa and Francisco Silva from UFPI. In our work, we aim to create the three versions of the difference in evolution meta heuristic to the mapping problem, considering the network slicing as a servers in 5G system. The first version is a sequential, and the second and the third versions are parallelized versions. Uh, finally, we design a new fitness function to take into account the bandwidth, delay, reliability, and geographic node position. Some contributions are we design a stochastic Petri net to model a network slicing as a service component, and we present some aspects in which the parallel approaches have advantages and disadvantages. Introduction Fifth generation mobile networks, 5G, have the ambition to endure a wide range of services and applications. Here in this figure, we can see some areas in which 5G is vital to the success of their goals. It's important to note that each application from each area has its demand. So, NSAAS is a standard mechanism adopted in 5G to face the diversity of demands and distinct requirements of services and applications. Network slicing has been designed as a key enabler to allow 5G to handle the Internet of Things and other vertical markets. In this animation, we can see the process of each tenant and submitting their network slice request and the providing serving them. The illustration shows that all slices share the same infrastructure, however, they are isolated and work separately. In our work and the real scenarios, the requisitions arrive during the time, therefore, the available resources change over time. The next generation mobile network alliance, the third generation project and partnership, and the International Telecommunication Union have suggested three types of slices. First, enhanced mobile broadband. Second one, ultra-reliable and low-latency communication, and the last one, the massive machine-type communication. It is important to note, these three and others can be defined and have different network behaviors based on their priority and values for bandwidth, delay, and reliability. Some important points from the introduction. NSAAS is a service that offers slices as a service. A slice is a virtual network to meet a specific tenant's desire. A tenant sends a requisition, VNR, to the NSAAS provider. A VNR has topology that contains nodes and links, duration, demands, or key OS parameters, like the nodes capacity, links capacity, like delay, bandwidth, and reliability. The process of mapping VNRs comprises a complex task to associate a set of virtual to a set of physical nodes and links, taking into account all network constraints and resource availability. And mathematically, this problem is known as Virtual Networking Embedding, or VNE.
The basic VNE problem is an integer linear problem, which is NP hard, as it can be proven by reduction to the multi-way separating problem. Even with a given virtual to physical node mapping, the problem of optimally allocating a set of virtual links to a single physical path reduced to the unsplitable multi-commodity flow problem, and the four is also NP hard. There are three approaches to dealing with VNE, exact heuristic and meta heuristic. Exact only indicate to small network not appropriated to 5G networks, its solution is fixed on the global optimal and can easily suffer from the problem of being stuck in the local optimum. Heuristic and meta heuristic aim at finding a suitable solution under realistic network scenarios. The meta heuristic solution can improve the quality of results by escaping from the local optimum. For, for that reason, in this working, we adopted the meta heuristic as a way to face the VNE problem. In our previous work, reference 5, based on review of 125 articles studied in reference 6, we review that genetic algorithm is one of the most used meta heuristic to solve VNE problem. Additionally, our previous work showed that with a small population size and repetition, difference evolution has a better acceptance rate than genetic algorithm. However, with a long execution time, therefore, in this work, we develop a way through parallelization that reduces the execution time of difference evolution. In this slide, we have the difference evolution meta algorithm. This is a sequential logic. Step one, there is the process of creating the initial population. The size of the population is a hyperparameter. The block into steps 2 and 6 is a repetition in which the number maximum of iteration is another hyperparameter. Step 2 is mutation and regeneration. Step 4, crossover. And step 5, selection. This red block is where the sequential code is parallelized. In this figure, we can see the three vectors used in the differential evolution. An important point is that the mutation of each individual into the population can be performed individually. This feature allows different parallelization methods. The population is a set of individuals. An individual or chromosome is a random map of a virtual node to a real node. Each individual is a possible map. The population size is a hyperparameter. It is a stochastic population-based technique. The population is defined by target vector. Due to the time limit, we will not detail the explanation of this equation but its definition and parameters are presented. In this slide, we have the step 4 uh, about the crossover. The difference evolutions crossover involves the creation of the trial vector, named as U. Also, the difference evolutions crossover process is more complex than in genetic algorithm, and it is the point where, in general, the difference evolution spends more time than the genetic algorithm when run with the same hyperparameters. Each individual in the vector U is created based on this rule. Again, due to time limit, we will not detail the explanation of this equation, but its definition and parameters are presented. Our fitness function is an special contribution which considers all the QoS parameters, bandwidth, delay, and reliability required in virtual network requests. 
fitness takes the individual's property as its parameter, it returns value between zero and any other higher value. If zero means that an individual does not meet all demands, if the return is one, it means that an individual fully meet a virtual network request. Return values greater than one mean that an individual represents a large set of the resources than needed. The higher the value, the more unnecessary resources are selected. Based only on the fitness, the difference evolution can select more adapted individuals. This figure illustrates the fitness behavior. The middle point represents the better individual selection. The higher points represent the overprovision, and the lower values represent the underprovision. In this slide, we have the mathematical description of the fitness function. Equation 3 denotes the final score of an individual. The individual's fitness is the average of all scores plus the result of the score logarithm based on the number of the hopes. The function C is the coefficient defined for each QoS parameter in a VNR. The variable P denotes a set of parameters from each type of slice ranging from 0 to 1, and the greater the number, the higher the relevance. Through the variable P, it is possible to create an countless type of slices using this coefficient. Here on this slide, we have how the score for each demand of a requisition is calculated. For the sake of time, let's just highlight the most important aspects of the equation. In equation 2, the Vmax denotes the maximal capacity of a specific resource in the whole infrastructure. R is a set of resources. Vgot returns a value that denotes the maximal capacity of resource R. And Vdesired returns a demanded capacity of resource R, which is required by individual I. So each individual I is associated uh, to a VNR. For the sake of time, we will not detail the explanation of this equation, but its definition and parameters are presented. Uh, the final step is the selection. So after the mutation and crossover, all results are stored in the trial vector. The next, we need to evaluate the fitness of all elements in the trial vector. The population or the final population is updated using the grid selection. Here we can see the equation. The equation is a very simple idea. Is take only the element of the trial vector or the target vector that has the lower fitness value. So the goal is to return the better individuals considering the trial vector and the target vector. All mathematical operations on the nodes in our project take into account the geographic position. In this figure, we can see the addition of two nodes. The node resulting from the addition is a new node with the longitude and latitude calculated by adding the longitude and latitude of nodes N1 and N2. If the new node exists in the real network, then it will be returned. If it doesn't exist, then the closed existing node to the calculated node will be returned. For the sake of brevity, this figure illustrates the parallelization process. The vertical way, each mutation and selection is performed in a sub-process. 
the horizontal way is more complex. In this way, the population is divided into subgroups, and each group is dealt with a sequential problem. At the end of all subgroups process, the better individual is selected. Another contribution is the stochastic Petri network to model all NSAAS components and the sequential vertical and horizontal versions. This model can be used to validate new experiments without the complete execution of the embedded algorithm. In this slide, there is a description of all transitions. For the sake of time, we will not explain all of them. After we have presented the vital aspects of our project, in this slide we will present the two datasets used for the simulation. The first dataset, uh, one, is an aggregation of European dataset from topology-zoom.org. And the second dataset is uh, created from the aggregation of US datasets from the same site. These two datasets were created following the same process described in the paper 5. And in the table 2, we have the, some properties of these two datasets. Uh, we have the nodes, links, degree, bandwidth, delay, reliability, values. As you can see, the dataset 2 is more complex, has more quantity of nodes, links, etc. About the simulation execution, we created four sets of PNR. And the number of requisition is the set 1 has 20, set 2 has 50, set 3 has 100, and set 4 has 150. Each algorithm was carried out 10 times with no tuples of repetition, each tuple uh, with a different number of repetition and population size. Each set is kept the same for each different mapping algorithm. And one VNR is composed of VNR identification, virtual no nodes demand, links, type of slice, bandwidth demand, delay demand, and reliability demand. In this slide, we can see the success average of the mapping of all algorithms using all tuples. Regarding the standard deviation, all algorithms obtained the same results. And this result shows that the parallelization process does not change the difference evolution behavior. Returning to the goal of this work, we intend to reduce the runtime, and the horizontal approach achieved this objective. In general, the vertical method obtained a higher runtime than the sequential. However, the horizontal reads 59% less runtime than the sequential version, taking into account all setups. As we said before, the PetriNet is another contribution, so using the data from the simulation, you, we can validate our model. And the model is an essential artifact to compute the mean time to absorption. We used the Mercury tool version 5.0.1 to design the PetriNet model, and through it, it was possible to carry out the data analysis. For the validation process, the p-test was performed for two samples where the MTTA values found in the simulation and experiment were compared. Uh, in summary, the p-values are greater than 0 0.05 implying that there is no evidence that both means 
are statistically different. So it means that our model is accurate and can be used to validate another experiment and another simulations since we use the same infrastructure. This work evaluated three versions of difference in evolution meta heuristic applied to the VNE problem, the promise to adapt the difference evolution in virtual network embedding problems because of its efficiency and nature that favor its adaptation to parallel versions. The horizontal version achieved the lower runtimes. Finally, the stochastic Petri net allows us to conduct evaluations with approximated results to validate a more extensible quantity of virtual network requests. Here we let the references used in our work and thank you for watching and we let a special thanks for international conference on network and servers in 2022 and special thanks for Federal University of Piauí, Federal University of Ceará in Brazil and EFREI in Paris.